You are missing out on a lot of easy content if you are not repurposing your blog post into other pieces of content. Content creation is time consuming, but it can be made a little bit easier by taking the content that you've already created and stretching it a little bit further. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take one piece of content and turn it into five. Now, the first piece of content that I create every single week is a blog post. I research a good topic, I come up with my keywords, come up with my title, and then I just start writing everything out into a Google Doc. And this first step here does not need to be perfect. I really just like to get the meat of the content because a lot of times that is the hardest part. Going back and fine tuning your content isn't as difficult. Plus with all the different types of content that we're gonna be creating, it's gonna change a lot. So it's really important to just get the meat of content down. And then once you are done writing the meat of the content, then you can copy and paste it into your WordPress and then you can add all the other things that go into a blog post, formatting it, editing it, making sure it looks good, adding in all the graphics or the pictures that you've chosen and everything else that goes into a blog post. But the meat of your content in that Google Docs can stay the same so that we can transform it and change it into other pieces of content later. And the next piece of content that I like to create is gonna be my YouTube video for the week. Now, if you don't have a YouTube channel, you obviously are not gonna be creating this piece of content, but for me, I do. So I take that blog post that I've already created and I turn it into my YouTube video for the week. Now this doesn't necessarily happen 100% of the time because sometimes what I post on my blog isn't going to work really well on YouTube, but for those weeks where I don't have the ability or the time to create two completely separate pieces of content, then this is exactly what I do to make sure that content is still going out on a regular basis. And it's a really great way to repurpose all the work that you have already done. And if you're gonna do this, Typically, at least for me and my process, the blog post is not going to be the same as the video script, which is why we wrote out all of that content already, but didn't worry about editing it to make it look perfect because chances are you're gonna be changing the video script a little bit because I don't write the same way that I speak. So it ends up being a little bit different. But as long as the bulk of the content is done, you can adjust it into a video script pretty easily. And you also might have to use slightly different keywords. Maybe you're using a different title, different things like that. Because again, two different platforms are gonna work two different ways. And there is also the option to turn it into a podcast if you maybe have that instead of a YouTube channel. I wouldn't turn it into a podcast, YouTube video, and blog posts. You could if you really wanted to, if you do have all three, or maybe you just take the idea and then you write a completely different podcast script because you don't want to use it in too many different places because some people might be watching the YouTube videos and they might be listening to the podcast or reading your blog post and watching the podcast. You don't want to have like too much of the same content. But if you have like an idea that you really like, maybe the blog post is written about one thing in the topic, the YouTube video is maybe the same as the blog post, and then the podcast is maybe slightly different, maybe more talkative, more perspective, more story oriented or something like that, as opposed to it being a complete one-to-one -one copy. Or if you feel like it and you think it works, maybe you can do a one-to-one -one copy. Like it really is up to you how you want to adjust this content. Now that's what I would consider the main three big pieces of content that you can create and repurpose. It might only end up being two if you only have a YouTube channel and a blog post or maybe a podcast and a blog post, but those are like the big three. And then everything else is just going to be smaller bite-sized pieces of that bigger piece of content that you have. So for example, when you send out your weekly email, if you have an email list, you can use the content that you created for that week and put it into an email to send out to your list. And I also, in my business personally, have a schedule for all of this. So Tuesday, I try to put out a new blog post, and then Thursday of that week is going to be the video, and then Friday is when the email to my list is gonna go out, and all three of those pieces of content usually are gonna be around the exact same topic. And that way, by the time Friday rolls around, both pieces of content are posted and I can write the email about it, which will then drive traffic back to either the blog post or the YouTube video or both, depending on what people click on, because at the end of the email, I will say, if you wanna read about this, or if you wanna watch the video, then go ahead and click one of these links and then you can watch more. Because for my emails that I send out to my list, I try to not make them very long. So I won't write the entirety of the blog post or the entirety of the video script into an email. I think it's just way too long. I don't think anybody really wants to read all of that in an email. So I will just cut out the main points and turn that into a very small portion of it. And then if people wanna read more, I say, here's the video, here's the blog post link, if you wanna learn more on this topic. And then it also drives traffic back to your other pieces of content as well, because people are now going to read the whole thing. So if you wanna do this, my advice would be to take one talking point from your content and turn that into an email. You may expand on it a little bit. You don't necessarily have to copy paste word for word what you said in your blog post into your email, especially if you do that and people go to read it, they might end up just clicking off because 
it's something that they've already read before. So maybe you just take one point and you expand on it. I typically write emails differently than I write blog posts differently than I write video scripts. So you can just take that main point and then turn it into an email because usually for me at least, emails are way more personable when I send them to my list. So they're not as structured as what the blog post would be and professional if that makes any sense. Or if you were doing like a 10 tips to do X blog post, then you can maybe give three tips in your email and then if you wanna read the other five or the other eight or whatever you have, then go ahead and check out the blog post or the video where I expand more on this topic. And once you're done with that, we're gonna be breaking this into even smaller forms of content. And in this case, I mean literally, because we can also turn this topic into short form content as well. And you can do this a couple different ways. You can either take your long form video that you've already created and just cut parts of it out and cut it down to 60 seconds and then post it on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube shorts, anywhere that you post short form content and use the content that you already have recorded. Or if you don't typically work that way, I don't usually like doing that because I feel like my videos are super long winded. So you need the whole context. I can't just take 60 seconds out of it and turn it into a short. I personally like to create a totally different script, not completely totally because obviously the topic is gonna be the same, but I will create something that I know I can turn into a 60 second video and then I will record that separately from my YouTube video and post that instead. And then this can also be shared across all of your social media. So you can also do both ways if you want, like take this as far as you want. If you did like a five point video, you can turn that into five different shorts potentially if you really wanted to. You could take your long form video, cut it up into 60 seconds, and then also do another short form piece of content where you talk specifically to the camera of your smartphone and actually create a short form video that way. So you could do both. It really just, again, depends on your business and how you like to create your content. Another popular method for doing short form content is just take a video of you doing literally anything. It can be typing at your computer, it could be walking, it could be doing the dishes, doing your hair, it could literally be anything. Just a short two, maybe five second clip of you doing anything at all and then putting some sort of text on the screen, some sort of call to action, like, do you wanna know how to do X? Read the caption. And then all of your points go inside of the caption. And this is a little bit of a sneaky way to like trick the algorithm, at least on Instagram Reels, because there's no way for you to pause the video. You can just mute it. And then the video plays in the background while people are reading your caption so that Instagram thinks that people are watching your video a ton and you're getting all of that watch time. People do this a lot. I personally don't like this way because it's just a sneaky way to like trick the algorithm, but it does work. That's the bottom line here is it really does work. So you could do that or you could take a video of you just looking at the camera, maybe pointing and then wherever your finger points is where text shows up in your video as well. And then you can also put more details in the caption as well. That's another good way to repurpose your long form content into short form content too. And you can also transform your long form content into other social media posts as well. So obviously the short form content is a social media post, but there are other ways that you can take that long form content into social media posts. You can create Pinterest pins and you should be creating Pinterest pins to promote your blog post. You can either do just regular text pins, but in this case, when I say repurpose your content, I mean creating infographics. And this is a Pinterest pin that has smaller text and more words. They work really, really well for me. So you could do the five summer trends you need to try out. And then you put the five trends on there, or maybe you only put three trends on there. Maybe you say, 15 trends, and then you put five on there, and then at the bottom, a call to action, read the blog post to find out more. Those work really well for me on Pinterest because it gets people to click on them, read it, and then Pinterest realizes that people are staying on your pin longer, or maybe they're clicking through because they wanna read more, or maybe they're resharing it because there's a lot of good information on there. For whatever reason, they do really well on Pinterest, at least for me personally, so that's something that you could try out. Or you could do a thread on Twitter slash X, whatever you wanna call it, or threads where you take your main points of your blog post and create a thread on there for people to read through. And then you can also link to your blog post as well. Or on Instagram, you could do a Instagram carousel where each picture has a different point on it. So there's a lot of different options for social media posts that you can use. But you may be wondering, what is the point of all of this? Why are you creating all this content instead of just creating brand new content? Like what is the point of doing all of this? And the idea is that you're doing more work or at least the same amount of work for less. You are stretching the content that you are creating every single week. Instead of creating 
10 different social media posts with 10 different topics and a YouTube video on a different topic and then a blog post and then you gotta figure what email to do. Instead of trying to figure out every part of your business and all the different content that you're gonna create, you just take one main idea for the week and then you use that to create all of your content for the week. It makes it so much more simple than having to come up with seven different social media posts for the week and an email and a blog post and a YouTube video topic that are all completely different because I don't have the time to write all of those different things and I'm sure you probably don't either. So this just makes it take so much less time to create the exact same amount of content. Or if you can't create all of that content because you were spending so much time trying to create different pieces of content, you might even be able to create more with this method. Now, do you have to do this every single week with every single piece of content that you create? Absolutely not. And I don't do this either. Sometimes I wanna write a lifestyle blog post that does not go on my content creation YouTube channel. That's totally fine. If I have more time throughout the week to do that, then I can do that. And maybe the blog post and the YouTube video are the same one week, but I have a different email that I wanna send out. Totally fine. Like it doesn't really matter. You don't have to do this the same way every single week. But for those weeks where you're like, I just need to get content out, this is a great way to repurpose that content. And you also don't necessarily need to do it in the same week either. Maybe one week I wanna put out a lifestyle post and then I wanna put out a content creation video. I can take that content creation video that I posted that week and I can use it for the blog post for the next week to save me a little bit of time in the next week. Really doesn't matter how you do this. It all depends on how you want to run your business, but still makes it a lot easier either way. And it's also a great idea because you can link all of the content together. The blog post that I have written on this topic is going to have the video embedded. So if people want to watch the video, they can. And in this video, the blog post link is going to be underneath. So if you want to read the blog post version of this, which is likely going to be slightly different than what you've heard here ever so slightly, then you can read the blog post and the email is going to be a little bit different. And then you can tell people, hey, watch the video or read the blog post. And then whatever medium they feel like consuming your content in, they have that option. So you're giving a ton of different options for people and also linking all that content together so that they can consume the same information relatively with whatever medium that they prefer and you're just driving traffic back to all your other sources. So I hope that was helpful. And as mentioned, if you wanna read the blog post version of this, it will be down below in the description and make sure to like and subscribe while you're down there for me as well. And if you wanna see more tips on blogging, check out this video right here or this video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.